about numbers and the number system so starting with numbers we have seen different types of numbers in the past when we have been discussing in various aspects of mathematical contents so today we'll be discussing on numbers and coming with the first and foremost type of numbers is the natural numbers natural numbers are the numbers which are expected which are expressed in the numerator form but they do not have the denominator for example when i take the natural numbers they are generally denoted with n and the set notation for that set of natural numbers would be starting with 1 2 3 4 and so on the natural numbers denoted by n starts with 1 2 3 4 and n still infinity now in this case we call them as natural numbers because they don't have the denominator but they have only the numerator and the, the definition here is they start with 1 and the next number would be the consecutive 2, 3, 4 and till infinity and when I come to the next set of numbers they are the whole numbers. So whole numbers are generally denoted by w and they start with 0 and they end at infinity. So when I understand the difference between natural numbers and whole numbers, I only see that whole numbers is the set of natural numbers with one additional element 0. So therefore I can mathematically define the whole numbers as all natural numbers including the element 0. This is how I mathematically denote the whole numbers. Now coming to the next set of numbers which are quite famous in integers. Let me start with the heading. Integers. Now integers are denoted by z or z and we define the set of integers as all the elements coming from minus infinity including the negative and the positive coming out till infinity. So these are the set of integers which includes both negative, zero and positive numbers. So these type of numbers are set of integers. And what do you understand from all these three? I can denote the integers with respect to natural numbers as as I see that all these are the negative natural numbers and all these are the positive natural numbers including 0. So I can just define the set of integers as negative natural numbers union the element 0 which is taken as a special case and then the positive natural numbers. So this is the set of integers which we define in number system. Now next comes the set of rational numbers which is what we are going to discuss in the present session because that is more important as compared to all this set of numbers. So rational numbers. Now rational numbers are denoted with capital Q. Now we define rational numbers in the set builder form as all the numbers which can be denoted in the form P by Q such that the conditions here are that P and Q must be integers which we have already discussed in the previous session and that Q should be not equal to 0. So under these two conditions we define the set of rational numbers in the form P by Q as rational numbers. Let's see some examples in set of rational numbers. For example, if I take 5 by 2. Now I want to know whether this is a rational number. So let's see if it satisfies these two conditions. Then we will justify on whether this belongs to Q. When I say 5 by 2, my P here is 5 and my Q here is 2. So using P as 5 and Q as 2, I identify that 5 and 2 are integers. 
and I also identify that the Q which is equal to 2 can never be non-zero. So clearly Q equal to 2 is not equal to 0. Therefore, I identify that phi by 2 according to the definition of rational numbers is a rational number which belongs to Q. So therefore phi by 2 belongs to Q. Let me take one more example and see if that belongs to a rational number. Minus 3 over 4. Let's see. So I take again this number compared with p by q form. So I get p as minus 3 and my q is 4 where minus 3 and 4 belong to z because even negative numbers come under integers and then q which is equal to 4 is not equal to 0. So these are the two conditions which satisfy q. Therefore I can say that minus 3 by 4 belongs to q. Yes. Now let me go to the third example on finding whether that particular example would be a rational number or not a rational number. So for example, I take square root of 2. So let me just take square root of 2. So in this case, I identify that the square root of 2 can be written as square root of 2 by 1, where this is written in the form p by q. So what would be my p? My p will be root 2 and my q will be 1. Therefore, I get therefore q equal to 1 belongs to z but p equal to root 2 the square root of 2 cannot be an integer. Therefore, it's, it doesn't satisfy the first property and hence I can say that root 2 does not belong to set of rational numbers. So this is how I understand the rational numbers through various examples. Yes. So we have been seeing different examples of rational numbers. So coming to the continued example is phi by 0 a rational number. This is very important in understanding rational numbers. So I taken this as a special example to understand what exactly is Q. So when I take the phi by 0, I understand that P is phi and Q is 0 where I take phi and 0 belong to Z but it doesn't satisfy the second condition which, which is nothing but Q is 0 but it should not be 0. Our condition for second case says that Q should not be non-zero therefore phi by 0 cannot be a rational number. So this is one of the important example in understanding set of rational numbers. Yes, now we'll try to compare each one of what we have uh, considered that is the natural numbers, the integers, the rational numbers and real numbers. Okay. Yeah. So when I just compare, let me take it as a comparison case between the natural numbers, the next is the whole numbers, next is the integers, the next is the rational numbers and then next is the real numbers. So I understand that all natural numbers are part of whole numbers, subset of whole numbers and all whole numbers are subset of integers and all integers are subset of rational numbers and all rational numbers are subset of real numbers. The only case in real numbers is that all numbers in the form p by q such that q is not equal to 0. This is the definition of real numbers. So this is how I relate between all the sets of numbers in mathematics. Natural numbers always subset of w, subset of z, subset of q, subset of r, where r stands for real numbers. In this session, we are going to discuss exclusively on rational numbers and the various properties involved in the rational numbers. Now, the first properties what I identify is under addition.
and a plus which is addition so the first and foremost property under addition is the closure property so when i have the closure property we'll see what exactly is it and then continue from the different types of examples now closure property is where if i take a and b belonging to q the set of rational numbers which you already denoted by q so if i have a and b belonging to q then we say that that implies a plus b also belongs to q the sum of two rational numbers is a rational number which is nothing but the closure property under addition next for example you, you can verify this by taking two different rational numbers and verifying whether the addition also is a rational number so let's cross check with an example let me take two rational numbers 5 by 2 and 7 by 3 we all know that these two are rational numbers written in the form p by q now so let me add them the addition would give me with an lcm of 6 and then this would be 5 times of 3 plus 7 times of 2 which would be 15 Plus fourteen by six. This would be nothing but twenty-nine by six. Now I understand this to be a rational number. This belongs to Q. Therefore, you take any two rational numbers and add them, you get the rational number, which is closure property. The second property. in addition under addition for rational numbers is the associative property so under associative property we take the same case as closure but i take three elements belonging to q so let a b c belong to the rational numbers q then the associative property says that a plus b plus c will always be equal to a plus b plus c if the three numbers belong to q so this is one of the property in addition which is called associative property for example you can verify this as in the previous case with three different numbers and just substitute on the left side and the right side and make them equal so let me take 5 by 2 1 by 3 1 by 2 belonging to q so let me take the left hand side of a plus b plus c then this i simplify and let's see what exactly we get so this would be nothing but the lcm of 5 by 2 plus 1 by 3 would be 15 plus 2 17 by 6 and this would be 1 by 2 when on simplification it gives 34 Plus six, forty by twelve. So that is a rational number, which you can further simplify to give ten by three. Let me take the right hand side and see if you get the same value ten by three. So a plus b plus c is the one what I would like to simplify here. So I get five by two. Plus the LCM of one by three and one by two, and simplified under addition would give me two plus three, which is five over six. And then I take the LCM of five by two and five by six. Then I get six five thirty plus ten by twelve, which is nothing but forty by twelve, which is in turn ten by three. now i see that the left hand side which i got as 10 by 3 also gives me 10 by 3 on the right hand side thus proving associative property holds associative property holds in this case and the third property is the existence of identity
So under addition, identity property is very important because it is very different from the other properties what we discuss. The, the basic definition of identity itself says bringing back the original element. So when I take for example A and I add something to get back A. So we all should identify what should be added to A to get back the same element A. That property is called identity. So in addition we know that the only element which gets back the original element is 0. So when you add 0 to any element you get back the original element. So 0 has a special property and in this case 0 is called the identity under addition. So this is very important in understanding the identity property of various numbers. For example, I take any number, any rational number, say I take 7 by 2 and I wanted to add 0 to this and see if I get back the same element. So I have and this should also be equal to 0 plus a. So in this case when I take 7 by 2 as the rational number, then I clearly understand that 7 by 2 when added with 0 gives me back 7 by 2. In other case, even when you take it in the form, 0 plus 7 by 2 also gives me 7 by 2. Therefore, we say that identity property holds in the set of rational numbers. We take any rational number and add 0 to that, you get back the original rational number and this property holds for any rational number using 0. And therefore, we say that identity property holds in Q and 0 is the additive identity. So let, let us make a note of that. 0 is called additive identity. Under addition. Next. The fourth property which I identify in the set of rational numbers is existence of inverse. Now in case of inverse property, we utilize the identity because there is a general saying that without existence of identity, inverse does not exist. So when it comes to existence of inverse, let me take the basic property this as in identity case I have identified that whenever I add something to the element I should get back the original element the inverse property says that when I add something to the original element I must get back 0 which is the additive identity so what should be added here to get 0 is what defines inverse property under Q so we clearly understand that in this case it is minus a which should be added to a to get back 0. So therefore a plus minus a is nothing but we can just refer this as a minus a which is 0. So this is how I get 0 and similar is the case when I take minus a added with a. So this is how existence of inverse is identified. But most important thing which we must note here is that inverse exists only when identity exists. So let's take it as a property. Inverse exists only when identity exists. Without an identity you cannot define an inverse. Let's see with some example in rational numbers. Let's prove the property in rational numbers. For example, I take 11 by 3. It is a rational number. Now I wanted to find its inverse under addition. So before that, we know that 0 is the identity which belongs to Q. Is the identity. Now using this identity, I had to find the inverse of 11 by 3. So therefore what I do is 11 by 3 plus something should give me 0. So I have to find that something which gives me 0 when 11 by 3 is added to that 
unknown. So therefore, this is a mathematical equation which can be solved by taking 11 by 3 to the right. So therefore, this would give me x equals 0 minus 11 by 3, which is negative 11 over 3. So this is called additive inverse of 11 by 3. So any number, its additive inverse would be negative of that number because we already identified here that minus a is the additive inverse of a. So 11 by 3, its additive inverse would be minus 11 by 3. So just with a differing of sign, the additive inverse is obtained from the original a belonging to q. Now continued from the previous example, let's see what will be the additive inverse of a negative number. So let me take minus 4 over 3 belonging to q and I would like to find the negative additive inverse of this negative rational number. So in this case, I identify this to be a and we have seen in the previous case that the additive inverse of a is minus a. So this can be written in the form of negative a as minus of minus 4 by 3 which becomes instead plus 4 by 3. So this will be the additive inverse of a. So this is how I develop the additive inverses of the numbers by just changing the sign. So minus 4 by 3 would be plus 4 by 3 and plus 4 by 3 would be minus 4 by 3. So reverse of these signs would give me the additive inverses of each other. Yes. Now the next and the last property which we identify in set of rational numbers is the commutative property. Now commutative property is also called abelian property and let's see what exactly it is. Suppose I take two elements a and b belonging to q then the commutative property says that the sum of a and b is nothing but the sum of b and a that doesn't matter whether order is changed in addition it gives back the same value that is what is called commutative property. So a plus b will be equal to b plus a. For example, if I add 7 by 2 with 3 by 5, it is nothing but adding 3 by 5 with 7 by 2. That doesn't affect the addition under commutative property. So let's see if that's really true by just verifying with two different uh, values taken out here. So when I take 7 by 2 plus 3 by 5, that would give me the value 5 is 35 plus 6 and this would give me 10 times of 2 6 plus 35 and this would obviously be same so when I just simplify this this would give me 41 over 10 and this would give me 41 over 10 so this is how I verify the commutative property now so we have identified totally five properties here. The first one is the closure property, then associative, then existence of identity, existence of inverse, and then we have identified the last property, which is the commutative property. So using these five properties, we will try to see if these properties can also be used for natural numbers, integers, or even the real numbers. So let's see how we can work out. Testing. the properties testing the properties for natural numbers whole numbers integers rational numbers and real numbers so we'll see how we can randomly test let's not go in brief but we'll see whether all properties are holding for each of n w z q and r so let me start with natural numbers which are denoted with n now in this case, so let me just identify the closure property. So does closure property satisfy in natural numbers? Yes, you take any two natural numbers and add them, you get back the natural number. So closure 
property holds it doesn't fail in any case so all natural numbers satisfy the closure property under addition let me now try with whole numbers does closure property hold for whole numbers yes you take any two numbers and add them you get back the whole number you take any two numbers say 0 and 5 0 plus 5 would be 5 which is a whole number so closure property holds even in whole numbers under addition next integers does closure property hold for integers under addition yes you take any two integers and just add them you get back again a new integer so therefore closure property holds under addition even for integers the next is rational numbers which you have already seen this is already proved in the previous cases for each of q then the real numbers yes it holds you take any two real numbers and add you get back the real number so closure property holds for each of n w z q and r so that is how we understand the closure property in each of the sets now we will see the next property associative and the next property which is identity inverse and commutative also for each of the cases and we will see if these all five properties which have been satisfying for q will satisfy for each of these sets next we will see associative property holding for each of them <coughs> now associative property is nothing but the extension of closure property